Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Great Mind, Texas, in our ongoing study in a philosophy of religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman. We're going to take a look at uh, the complete composite triad of Brightman's entire system. That'll be pages 1 through 227. At the midpoint of his book, we finally have reached that point where we can look at his entire system as a composite triad. And it consists of uh, the triad of experience, revelation, and religion. Experience, revelation, and religion. And in the center, faith is that which interacts with all three moments. Let's take a look at block one. Take a look at the experience of value. Experience confronts us with uh, the lower and the higher intrinsic values and with in instrumental values for obtaining the intrinsic through dialogue at Aristotle's De Kunta Threshold, we raise up our supposed value claims to notions of idas values or ideals of the true. Then we gather these idas ideals into a systematic coalescence using signs of relation. We form a systematic model of our idas ide ideals. It then remains for us to posit this theoretical ideal model into externality to reach verification. And we take up uh, the methodology of experimental positing and interpretive construction. That's Brightman's definition of faith, experimental positing and interpretive construction. This leads us to posit the concept of God which is equated with the creation and the permanence of value. Out of this dialectical participation and practice comes the return moment of unio mystica, where we are informed by a surplus of value that is internalized so as to revise our state of mind. There is a return moment where we do revise our state of mind and our sign model. There's always a surplus in any action and reflection of praxis. That is our encounter with experience. Now, block two, we have an encounter with revelation as objectively present in reality. We know and we refine our concept of God through praxis action as experiment and construction. Our task is one of consistency to realize consistency between theory and fact of experience. This is called heuristic process of trial and error. Our heuristic praxis leads us to identify the axiogenetic tendencies in experience. That's what Brightman calls revelation, axiogenetic tendencies in experience. Which make up the ultimate ground of value that ask for our participation. Subjective behavior recognizes the axiogenetic tendencies. It's the behavior of faith that we've talked about, the experimental method of reason to stretch beyond itself. Brightman says, therefore, man becomes part of the revelatory axiogenetic process. Our response to revelation makes us part of that axiogenetic process of generating value in reality. From the perspective of living religion, we identify the, this otherness of nature as rhema voice. We label it Rama voice from the perspective of living religion. Our response raises nature to axiosoteric event. And the concept of God becomes raised up as well to God as subject or personal God. So we've had uh, our encounter with experience. And then behind experience is our encounter with revelation, with axio genetic tendencies. And these two combined together lead us to Brightman's phenomenology of religion. If you look at block three, experience plus revelation equals a phenomenology of religion. Our methodology is always empirical, but it's non-scientific because we address the phenomena of consciousness and of feeling and of belief. We return again to Aristotle's De Kunta Threshold, but this time with an intentionality that is Hegelian in nature. 
The third moment for Brightman is Hegelian. Dialogue seeks to define a new set of signs that will include monotheism, conversion, and illumination. We take up the notion of the realm of positing from Hegel, where the self engages in thinking about the real as internal externality. That is Hegel's realm of positing as an internal externality. It's that filter through which we view all of reality. That's at the forward portion of our mind. So we take up that uh, Hegel's concept of the real as the realm of positing. History and psychology and sociology are all enlisted for support and input. But Brightman says the love of aletheia truth becomes our guiding principle for all praxis action. We seek not to possess the truth, but instead to unify the truth. From the perspective of living religion, we posit the notion of oughtness or the notion of, uh, of moral obligation. So if we want to understand Brightman's entire philosophy of religion as a holistic system, it basically will always center around his definition of faith, which is experimental positing and interpretive construction and reconstruction as we continue to revise our sign model. It's experimental positing and interpretive construction, which goes on as an ongoing dialectic. And then working around this experimental positing and interpretive construction is the overarching triad of experience, revelation, and religion. Experience, revelation, and religion. And they all interact with each other, and they all interact with the praxis of faith. You could actually call it a praxis of faith if you wanted to define his uh, position on his definition of faith because it is the dialectic of experimental positing from Hegel and interpretive construction. But he begins with that. Uh, he's always using the Aristotle's de Kunta threshold of dialogue with others within the body of Christ and uh, it helps us to raise up supposed values to become true values, which are IDOS ideals. And then we construct an ideal model. That ideal model needs to be posited in external reality in order to be verified. So ideal IDOS model, which combines our notions of the true with relational signs, that gets posited and worked out through this action of experimental positing and interpretive construction. That leads us to the concept of God. And not just any concept of God, but God as subject. God who speaks through rhema voice as that otherness of nature. And then with these experiences, which are all empirical, we can talk about religion. Blocks 1 and 2 are empirical, okay? They're empirical, non-scientific, because we take up the phenomena of consciousness. But that is empirical. Block 1 block 2 are empirical, and they lead to religion in block 3, all centered around the notion of faith as experimental positing and interpretive construction. But it gives us absolutely the complete system uh, as a composite after the midpoint of the book, reaching page 227. And I wanted us to pause here and get this picture because I think it's going to help us. We've still got another 225 pages to go, so we've got a good bit to go. But this helps us to be able to shape the second half of the book, which is, which is going to be addressing the problems that confront religion. He's going to address the problems that confront religion. Well, now we have his triad for reaching religion. The experience of value which also includes behind it the experience of revelation. And that revelation is the axiogenetic tendencies in reality and our participation, which means we become a part of the axiogenetic process, and that becomes an axiosoteric 
event from soteria in the Greek for salvation. It becomes a, we raise nature to saving event from the perspective of living religion. We raise nature to saving event because we see that which isn't normally seen. We see the invisible. We see the divine behind the natural. So Bretman gives us a great composite at this midpoint in his book. It's a very large volume, but I thought we needed this recap to really put the triad together so that we will be focused for our second half of the book. And that's going to wrap up uh, the composite triad for Brightman's entire system, pages 1 to page 227. And we're going to pick up uh, next time back into our regular lessons, beginning with page 228. <clears throat>